Where did we come from? It's a question we humans have long pondered yet a straight-up answer is proven difficult to find. Scientists have done their best, but even their most persuasive theories can be dispelled in the blink of an eye. That happened recently, in fact, after a scientific paper was published in February 2022. This work laid out a startling discovery, and it's totally upended common perceptions about our evolutionary history. One five-million-year-old fossil could throw out our assumptions about human evolution. Even though that important paper was published in 2022, it's taken a long time to get to this point. The study's based on a collection of bones found way back in the 1960s, out in the Jordan Valley. Decades have passed since that time, of course, but in 2018, scientists decided to take another look at the hole. It was to prove a fateful decision. It's long been believed that humankind originated from Africa before spreading across the whole of the Earth. And this new look at the decades-old discovery has shed light on this vital chapter in our story. It doesn't quite look like what many experts expected, though. Scientists are delighted to have come across such important insights hidden away in old finds. As paleoanthropologist John Hawkes of the University of Wisconsin-Madison remarked to Live Science, it's great to see new discoveries coming from old collections like this one. It shows that there is always something left to find even when archaeologists think they've done it all. Discoveries like this one are incredibly important, as the history of humankind is extremely complicated and remains mysterious in many ways. If we're ever to get to the bottom of our true origins, it'll take novel thinking and a lot of work. Perhaps this latest insight about our early days represents a major step in the right direction, then. Our species, Homo sapiens, is the only type of human on Earth today. But that wasn't always the case. At one time a tremendous variety of human species wandered the planet, and they even interacted with one another. The degree to which these peoples had relationships is difficult to know, though efforts are constantly being made to clarify those matters. It isn't yet entirely clear when humans came into being. We're talking about an evolutionary history going back millions of years, so precise answers aren't exactly going to come easily. Having said that, certain discoveries help us to get closer to the truth. Plenty of bones of ancient human species have been found, and they can be quite telling. Among the oldest human bones ever discovered are those belonging to a species, known as Homo habilis, which is thought to have been alive more than 2 million years ago. A roughly 1.9 million year old species called Homo erythelfensis has also been noted, as well as the more famous Homo erectus. This latter species exhibited lots of characteristics that we can still see in ourselves today. We also know about a category of ancient humans whom we might describe as superarchaic. This group trailed off onto their own evolutionary path from other types of human about 2 million years back. The thing is, though, they also interbred with members of archaic species, such as Denisovans and Neanderthals. This is the earliest example of interhuman procreation that we know of. The archaic humans developed later than their superarchaic relatives, but we still have a lot to learn about them as well. While we've been aware of the existence of Neanderthals for almost a couple of centuries now, other species continue to be identified. Denisovans were uncovered as recently as 2008, for instance. What we do know, though, is that many of these species interbred with one another. We can find clear proof of interspecies breeding in the relatively fresh discovery of some human remains. These had belonged to a teenage girl who'd been alive something like 90,000 years back and whose home had been inside a cave. Her DNA was extracted and tested, revealing she'd had a Denisovan dad and a Neanderthal mom. Even Homo sapiens was involved in interspecies breeding, as anthropologist Alan R. Rogers explained to the History website in 2020. He explained, when the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology began getting nuclear DNA sequence data from Neanderthals, then it became very clear very quickly that modern humans carried some Neanderthal DNA. That was a real turning point it became widely accepted very quickly after that. It doesn't seem like these instances of modern humans mating with Neanderthals were particularly unusual, either. As a matter of fact, emerging research seems to point towards this having been a fairly common occurrence. Still, we don't really know at what point in history these relationships were most common or when they ended. Experts are still working on pinpointing those answers. For a long time, experts didn't think that African people had any Neanderthal DNA in their bodies. That's due their ancient relatives never having left Africa, meaning they couldn't have mated with European Neanderthals. Yet new research is making it clear that today's Africans do, indeed, have Neanderthal ancestry. How could this be, though? 
Well, one theory is that some Homo sapiens actually migrated back to Africa after their time in Eurasia, where they'd intermingled with Neanderthals. And this brought Neanderthal DNA to Africa. Andrew C. Sorensen's an expert focused on archaeology, and he has a nice way of conceptualizing human evolution in light of work such as this. Speaking to history, he laid out the manner in which most of us think of our species' evolutionary path. That is, as a classical tree of evolution. Sorensen thinks this isn't quite right, though, and that it's actually more like a braided stream. New discoveries are constantly forcing experts in the field to reevaluate everything we thought we knew about our past. As Sorensen observed, it seems like the more DNA evidence that we get, every question that gets answered, five more pop up. So it's a bit of an evolutionary whack-a-mole. Because our species' history goes back so long in time, it's really difficult to find the evidence we need to help clarify our origins. Things such as ancient bones and artifacts are difficult to come by, but they're essential in telling the story. So those that have already been discovered have shed light on many of these issues. Based on the evidence we have, it seems a sure bet that we did come into being in Africa. But it gets more complicated after that. Rather than evolving in one particular place on the continent, it seems we came from all over. A multitude of hominid species were dotted about the place, all of whom intermingled and over time came to form the modern human. Rick Potts, director of the Smithsonian's Human Origins program, has spoken to Smithsonian Magazine about this process. He explained, East Africa was a setting in foment, one conducive to migrations across Africa during the period when Homo sapiens arose. It seems to have been an ideal setting for the mixing of genes from migrating populations widely spread across the continent. The implication is that the human genome arose in Africa. Everyone is African, and yet not from any one part of Africa. The oldest remains belonging to modern humans ever discovered were unearthed in modern-day Morocco. These things are 300,000 years old, and they're as intriguing as they are important. It isn't that they imply we came from Morocco, as evidence of Homo sapiens is found in the whole of Africa, but that they show just how far we moved over the continent. Human beings seem to have an inclination toward upping sticks and finding new lands to live in. We can see that evidence today just by considering how much of the Earth we've now populated. Until recently, though, experts thought human migration began at a relatively late point in history. Yet maybe the story many of us have known about human migration from Africa isn't quite what we thought it was. It's long been believed that modern humans set out from Africa to the rest of the world 50,000 or so years ago. That's a neat narrative, but what if the truth's more complicated? There's deliberation among experts about how exactly human migration from Africa played out. Some people think it happened in a single wave, while others are of the opinion it occurred over the course of several. Well, new research has been coming out that suggests the latter view is probably correct. This new study is based on data extracted out of an ancient backbone that was found in Israel. And ancient isn't an exaggeration, this thing dates back well over a million years. It was unearthed quite a while ago in 1966, during a dig at Ubedia site near the border between Jordan and Israel. This backbone wasn't the only thing to be discovered at Ubedia, either. Objects made of stone have also come from the site, as have several different types of animal bone. Some of these bones belong to species that are no longer around, including the mammoth and the saber-toothed tiger. Many of the items extracted from the Ubedia site back in the 1960s have been held at the Hebrew University's National Natural History Collections. This means they've been available for researchers to look at, which thankfully is what's happened. A bunch of experts have accessed the objects and studied them closely, and it's led to some intriguing revelations. This latest group of researchers started sifting through the collection of Ubedia bones back in 2018. It was during this process that they noticed one bone in particular that stood out. The object had really captured their attention, so they needed to figure out what exactly it was they were looking at. The researchers cross-checked this backbone to the bones of other creatures they knew had been in the area long ago. These included the likes of hippopotamuses, gorillas, chimpanzees, horses, rhinoceroses, hyenas, and bears. That must have been arduous work, but even after completing it, they still hadn't matched the bone to any of these animals. Eventually, the team concluded that it must belong to a human species. Looking at the bone, it became clear to the team that the item hadn't come from a grown-up. It was from a kid, aged somewhere between 6 and 12. Having said that, though, this kid was tall. At the time that he or she died, they probably stood at something like 5 feet and 1 inch tall. And their weight was between 100 and 110 pounds. This would have made them way bigger than any modern humans of the same age. 
as an adult, then this kid probably would have stood at something like six foot and six inches. That would have been a mightily tall human. But let's just put a pin in that for a moment. And let's consider another discovery. This time, it's about a bone found at a place called Manissi, which is in the nation of Georgia. This bone from Manissi dates back about 1.8 million years, and it seemingly belonged to a species of human that was quite short. Estimates suggest that it was at most 5 feet tall in adulthood. As paleoanthropologist John Hawkes put it to live science, Manissi hominins are small in body size, at the smallest end of human variation across populations today. So, why is this Manissi bone important in the context of our story? Well, it clearly belonged to a different species of human than the one discovered at Ubedia. And that would seemingly serve as evidence that humans left the African continent in a multitude of waves, rather than in just a single one. It wasn't just a difference in size that distinguished the Ubedia specimen from the Dmanisi one, either. Both bones were discovered alongside tools, but the Ubedia implements were more sophisticated than those used over at Dmanisi. These people, then, had clearly come from different cultures with different ways of doing things. Another interesting factor that researchers are considering relates to the respective climates of Ubedia and Manisi. On the one hand, conditions in Manisi were dry and the ecosystem could be described as a savanna. But in Ubedia conditions would have been more muggy and hotter, and the landscape would have been defined by trees. This suggests that different species of human lived in varying kinds of environments. A lot of new avenues of thought can be unlocked through these simple discoveries of ancient bones, then. But many researchers are most excited about the size of the Ubedia specimen. Mark Meyer is one of them, as we can see from an email he sent to Live Science in which he focused on the physical dimensions of the child. Meyer wrote, assuming that it is a hominin, what is mind-blowing is that the Ubedia fossil is developmentally like a five-year-old, but is significantly larger than our team's entire sample of fossil homo and juvenile humans up to age 17, in fact, it's the size of very large individuals such as Neanderthals or gorillas. To have a five-year-old child as large as an adult gorilla is just wild. The thing is, though, researchers can't get too excited about this enormous human child. After all, it mightn't be entirely representative of its species. Maybe this kid had a condition that made it big, and the rest of its kind were actually smaller? There are other possible factors at play here as well. So researchers need to be cautious before definitively proclaiming the validity of the multi-wave theory of migration away from the African continent. As Hawks cautioned, humans have changed in body size many times in our evolution, and both large-bodied and small-bodied human populations today have emerged over thousands of years, which is a short time compared to the hundreds of thousands of years here. So I don't think finding a single large individual has to mean a different dispersal than the Dmanisi material. Skepticism's important in a case such as this, of course, but researchers can still discuss their emerging theories in light of the recent discovery. Hawks added, I think it's likely that humans or other hominins were in Eurasia much earlier than Dmanisi. There are a few sites that seem to have older stone tool evidence, in Jordan, China and Pakistan. There are still plenty of questions that need to be answered, then, the one thing's clear. More digs need to take place over at Ubedia. As Alan Barash, the main researcher behind this effort, told Live Science, we need to continue excavation in Ubedia, who knows what bones are waiting to be discovered. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.